showed me what it looks like. Yeah. So if it's not like this when you get there, if it looks like that, just look at the page. Okay. Right here. And again, one, I'll probably start in as you're walking up. Okay. And I will call you by name. Okay. And then I'll right. read all six, and then I'll take care of the responses. With the and she said, when you're done, then I'll walk away. Yeah, and I'll tell you, please be seated. Please be seated with them. Second reading? Yes. Joe does the first reading I'm taking. This is this is Joe's reading. When he's finished, he'll turn the page. Okay. So it will be open to you right here. Yep. When you finish the reading, you'll step down, turn around and bow, and return to your seat. No. Oh. Come up, bow, come here, read. Go down, bow. Return to your seat. Got it? Got it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be yeah. fine. As I said, this is why you catch me now. <laughs> and then if you have a Yeah, I'm definitely. Upset Whatever you do is best. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. 
one in. How are we doing? Good. Father jo Christopher. Christopher Joe McLean. Good to see you. You're doing which reading? First reading. Book of Wisdom. Hopefully it's the same that I practiced. Call you up by name in the beginning. Okay. Uh, after we take care of the funeral, Paul, I'll go back to my seat. Let us pray. After that, um, I will be seated. Or I'll invite everyone, please be seated. Is anybody Joe Ford to proclaim for us our first reading? Okay. He's going to come forward on the altar. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. If you want to look at it, I'll take one more quickly. Yeah, yeah. In the mic, is there any trick or? Just leave it on. Nope. It's going to be on. Yeah, it's good. Um, and then if you remember, just move. Okay. Not a second reading, one more. I used to read it my church. I was going to say, Hugo's, where did you go? I grew up at St. Clair, Montevoco, Gross Point, and then I just came from Our Lady of the Lakes in Waterford. So my wife, Margie, went to Lakes. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Good. I'll tell her that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Father.
Good morning. Welcome to the Catholic community of St. Peter Parish. As we begin this celebration of new life, I invite you to stand now and sing number 452. Sing to the mountains. Number 452. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. John was claimed by Christ in the saving waters of baptism, and so we bless his body once again with those saving waters. In baptism, John also received a white garment, a sign of his Christian dignity to be brought unstained to this moment. Now we clothe him once again with this funeral pall, that sign of that Christian dignity he received, that in baptism, John received the light of Christ which we're reminded of in the Paschal Candle, that that light has always burned bright in John's heart. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery your servant John, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as I invite Joe Ford to proclaim for us our first reading. Amen. 
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the ancient crown for men, and an unsullied life the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the whirl of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he sped him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, I invite John Ford to proclaim for us our second treaty. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, 
we too might live in the newness of life. For if we had grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might not be that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Please rise. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. And if there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today we gather in sorrow and in sadness at the passing of John from this life. But we gather as those with hope. We gather with great faith and confidence in what Jesus has promised to us. What Jesus promises to those who have been baptized, those who have come to know him, to love him, to serve him. Those who allow Christ to be their way, their truth, and their life, that he goes before us to prepare a place for us in his Father's house. And so we gather today in great confidence, in the same confidence that John had in his heavenly father, that we now come to pray for John, that we come to thank the Lord for the life that he lived, for all the blessings and the gifts of his life, the gift he was to all of your lives. 
the blessing he was, that rock of faith for others. For me, one of the uh, hardest or saddest things for me to meet with families uh, as I help them to prepare the liturgy is that I rarely get a chance to know who the people are, to really get to know them. So I rely on the, uh, the family to, uh, to share with me the life of the deceased. And I often am moved like I was uh, yesterday going, man, I really wish I had a chance to get to know John. A man who was living for others, a man uh, who loved to talk. To, okay, there's the laughter. <laughs> good, good thing I got it right. <laughs> See, you all know John. You know the kind of man that he was. He made everyone feel at ease. He took care of others, shared all of his, his time, his talent, his treasure, all that he was, all the blessings he received from God he shared with others, making other people uh, feel like family taking you in, giving you his time, his attention, sharing with you his joy, his generosity. If that was over hockey, playing it, watching it, I mean, naturally, he lives in Detroit, so it has to be Red Wings. I know there's debate out there, but we're going to go with the Wings. But all of those moments you shared with John, those are blessings given to you, given to him by our Heavenly Father. That God uh, guided John in his life in the ups and the downs and the struggles and the, especially these last few years with cancer, his great confidence in faith. Coming to Mass and trusting uh, himself to the care of Our Lady through the prayer of the Rosary. That great faith that he had, that he shared with many of you, that's what we gather in today. That for the world, death is the end. This is it. This is all we have. But John knew better. We know better. That we know that God goes to draw us to himself where there is no more illness, sickness, or suffering, but where there is great paradise. That the Lord shepherds us to himself, that we should not be unaware those who've been baptized into Christ. Because as we believe, we die with Christ in those waters of baptism, and we rise from them to new life in baptism, and that's why we have those symbols once again. That we're reminded of the promise of baptism that John lived, that Christ claimed him in those waters. That he guides us in our heart to live that Christian dignity in Christ all the days and that Christ lights the way for us through it all. That our faith strengthens us. And so we gather in confidence to entrust now John back to his heavenly father. For all of you, that particular relationship, if it's the difficulty of burying a son, or a sibling, or a friend, a spouse, that father figure. How beautiful of a life he lived, that he took others in and made them feel special, that love he had. God not blessing him with biological children, but with spiritual children. Those he cared for with great love. Remember that in these days to come, when John comes to mind, when you're sitting there watching hockey on television or you hear an airplane flying overhead wondering what it is, in those moments, in those memories of John, whatever that was, those great vacations or trips you took with him or the stories or the moments you shared, when those come to mind, I invite you, in those moments, thank the Lord. Thank God for those moments you were able to share with him. And then also give to John the greatest gift that you can, pray for him. Offer to our Heavenly Father a prayer that John might rest 
secure today in the paradise of heaven. For the dead can no longer pray for themselves, but they rely on our faith to pray for them. And then, thirdly, ask John to pray for you. Yes, he might not pray for himself now, but he prays for us. Let us ask him in the faith that he had that we might follow Christ as he did. That we all might try to allow Jesus to be our way, our truth, and our life. And then I would add uh, another one as he trusted in the rosary. And Our Lady, how fitting, December 8th, the Immaculate Conception, the Feast of Our Lady. She renewed that vocation in marriage. And when the Lord calls them to himself, that we might trust ourselves to Mary's care, to the love of our Heavenly Mother as he did. Let us continue to trust in our sorrow and sadness at the passing of John and Christ's love for us. That if we continue to keep Christ as our way, our truth, and our life, then we too will see John once again. We have that confidence that we will see him again in the paradise of heaven. Please rise. At this time, I invite Carol Ford to continue to lead us in our prayers. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, John received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and wait the kingdom of God. Especially Carmen, Dean, Gino, Mary and Bob. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare the altar, and I invite Marie and Duane to bring forth our gifts.
Please rise. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of God. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant John, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying, as one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember your servant John, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please rise. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer each other that sign of peace. Please kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. This morning, for the reception of Holy Communion, myself and the deacon will uh, distribute the Eucharist in the front of the church here. Um, I ask if you're not Catholic, um, or you are and not prepared to receive the Eucharist today, please come forward with your arms crossed across your chest like this, and we will be happy to give you a blessing. Number 762, we shall rise again, 762.
Please rise. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother John may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Two brief announcements immediately following the liturgy this morning. We will go in funeral procession to Resurrection Cemetery, where we will lay John to his place of final rest. I ask if you would like to join the family at the cemetery, uh, please uh, see one of the funeral directors immediately after Mass, and they will make sure that you get into the funeral procession. Uh, again, they will direct you outside in the parking lot where to get in line as we go to the cemetery. And then immediately following after Resurrection Cemetery, the family would like to invite you to join them at the Italian Cultural Center uh, for luncheon to remember the life of John. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again. When the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. At this time, I invite us in the silence of our hearts, let us offer to John a prayer in our hearts that he might find rest in Christ. Into your hands, Father, our mercies, we commend our brother John in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon John in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And peace.